symmetry analysis of designs of various cultures has been addressed by mathematicians since the early part of the 20th century. One example are the designs in the tilings that adorn the Alhambra Palace in Granada, Spain. This artwork, representative of Moorish culture, have been analyzed extensively by several mathematicians, such as Grunbaum and Shepard, for their high degree of planar symmetry. Another example is the stencil cloth and fabric from the Kakadrove province in Fiji. Professor Donald Crow, an American mathematician, has analyzed this cloth for its frieze pattern structure. Our country, the Philippines, is rich in cultural heritage. Textile or fabric is very much part of each indigenous community. Whether it is for practical purposes, for expression, for instance, to reflect status, achievement, or religious belief, or a part of social tradition and ceremony. The textile shows artwork and designs unique to each community. Each textile or fabric displays distinct algebraic and geometric structure which makes each piece interesting to study mathematically. In this presentation, we give a mathematical study of selected textile from the Floy Quintas collection. We analyze pieces from his Binacol and Pinilian collection, Egadang shirt, and Itneg handkerchief, items from his Yakan Saputangan and Tausu Pishabit collection. A mathematical study of a repeated pattern in a cultural ornament, such as textile or a piece of cloth, entails investigating the pattern's symmetries. A repeated pattern has a basic discrete design element or a motif. Application of a symmetry, which in mathematics we refer to as a distance-preserving transformation, sends the motif to itself or repeats the motif systematically either along a strip or a planar surface. It can be proven mathematically that there are four symmetries in the plane. One symmetry is the translation. A translation shifts the motif, in this case a triangle, by a given distance along a line. The symmetry is indicated by a vector as shown to denote the distance and direction of the shift. A reflection, on the other hand, moves a motif along a line called a reflection axis, producing a mirror image. A rotation moves a motif about a center or fixed point at angular intervals. The symmetry is represented by a point or a polygonal figure that marks the location of the center of rotation. In this case, the square is used to indicate the center of a 90-degree rotation. Finally, a glide reflection is a transformation that is a combination of a translation and a reflection. For planar patterns, Three possibilities occur on how a motif is repeated by either one or a combination of these four symmetries. A finite symmetrical design is obtained by repetition of a motif using a center point, either using only rotations about the center, or reflections about axis to the center.
If a repeating pattern admits translations in one direction, a pattern is called a freeze or a strip pattern. There are altogether seven symmetry classes of freezes or strip patterns. If a repeating pattern admits translations in two directions, the pattern is called a wallpaper pattern. There is a total of 17 symmetry classes of wallpaper patterns known. All repeating patterns in one or two dimensions can be classified to belong to exactly one of these seven or 17 symmetry classes respectively. This classification distinguishes geometrically one planar pattern from another. In our study on the mathematics of textile, the goal is to use mathematics to investigate artwork of a particular indigenous community based on the symmetry class of the associated repeated pattern. Let us begin with the analysis of a blanket woven in the Pinilian technique. The design in a blanket woven in this technique is achieved by varying the waist the horizontal weft threads are inserted across the vertical warp threads. The particular bracket that we have analyzed consists of three panels that have been sewn together. There are two primary motifs as shown on the screen and enclosed in blue. The motifs are created using 15 different horizontal weft patterns that are employed in a repeated sequence. Each weft pattern floats from left to right at repeated intervals. The design demonstrates the weaver's ability to fuse horizontal and vertical elements into a pattern, giving rise to symmetries which include horizontal and vertical reflections, 180-degree rotations about the centers of each motif, and translations or shifts in two directions. In this work of art, it is important to note that the weaver introduces what we call in mathematics a symmetry breaking of the blanket's primary design by a change in the warp and weft configuration. At the end of the blanket, the weaver inserts human and horse images, making his signature or pattern to the blanket's overall design. In particular, the weaver introduces 23 different weft patterns, repeating this sequence twice at the bottom end of the central panel. This highlights the expertise on the part of the weaver in handling warp and weft configurations. The whirlwind or casicus design among the itnegs demonstrates a clever solution to the problem of depicting concentric circles on a rectangular grid. The arrangement of negative and positive colored threads in the form of graduated rectangles emanating from a central rectangle provide the illusion of movement as of a whirlwind. These motifs are repeated the same distance along horizontal and vertical directions to create 180 degree rotational symmetries with centers at each central rectangle and also between two central rectangles. There are also reflectional symmetries about horizontal and vertical axis as shown. The combination of these geometric elements 
result in an illusion of swirling circles or ripples believed to cause dizziness to evil spirits. A very interesting feature of this Gadang shirt is that the design of the front, the back, as well as the sleeves is a combination of strip patterns from different symmetry classes. The strip pattern with diamond-like motifs has vertical as well as a horizontal reflectional symmetry and 180 degree rotations with centers where the axis of reflections meet. The thinner strips, such as those colored yellow or white blue yellow, appear like parallel lines from a distance. Looking closely, these are strip patterns that have reflectional symmetries with vertical axis as shown. The intricate beadwork also has a motif, which is repeated along the edges of the garment and around the neck. This itneg handkerchief shows that even without varying the breadth of the warp and weft yarns, patterns other than checkered or plaid designs can be produced. The in skillful interplay of green threads in the warp and weft creates an illusion of pentagons while the manner in which the weft yarns are inserted produces isosceles right triangles. There are no vertical reflections, but there is a reflectional symmetry with horizontal axis passing through the vertex of the isosceles triangles whose bases are vertical. In addition, the points at which pairs of isosceles red triangles intersect at the respective vertices or centers of 180 degree rotations. In our study, we were fortunate to analyze closely four different examples of the Yakan Saputangan, each Saputangan showing a complex geometrical structure. Each of the saputangan shows a center square, four squares of the corners with identical motifs and strip patterns at the sides. Every finite symmetrical pattern at the center and corner squares adopts the inherent symmetries of a square which includes a 90 degree rotation about the center of the design, horizontal vertical reflections, and reflections along diagonal lines of the square, each axis passing to the center. The strip patterns along the borders have vertical and horizontal reflections, as well as 180 degree rotations about the points of intersection of the reflection axis. An essential feature in the Pisha bit is a basic geometric figure, namely the square. In this particular Pisha bit, the central design is divided into 25 square sections showing four different motifs. There is a 90 degree rotation at the center of the design, a horizontal and a vertical reflection with axis passing to the center. Strip patterns surround the central design and decorate the edges of the Pisha bit. These symmetrical patterns possess a glide reflection and alternating vertical reflections and 180 degree rotational symmetries. The second Pisha bit that is shown in this presentation consists mainly of 
a center square, four squares at the corners, and rectangular regions consisting of smaller squares at each side. A motif appearing in each square, such as what is shown, has a vertical reflection, a horizontal reflection, and a 180-degree rotation with center at the center of the design. Observe that the center square splits into 18 congruent rectangular regions or sections exhibiting two distinct motifs. A motif in each given rectangle also has a vertical reflection, a horizontal reflection, and a 180-degree rotation about the center of the design. Strip patterns of blue and white with only translational symmetries surround the center square. There are also two types of strip patterns consisting of zigzag designs with vertical reflectional symmetries that appear at the borders of the pisha bit and around the squares and rectangles. A sapotongan and a pisha bit are square fabrics. One can admire the artistry and skill of the weaver by the manner in which he puts together rectangles and squares as well as friezes, each of varying geometric elements to arrive at an overall design which is highly symmetric. In summary, the textiles in the Floyd Quintos collection exhibit varied types of symmetrical patterns. Finite designs such as what is found in the Saputangan or the Pisha Pit, one-dimensional strip patterns such as what is found in the Gadam shirt, planar patterns or two-dimensional repeating patterns. An ornament coming from a particular culture has a defining symmetrical structure, which can be attributed to the weaving technique, such as the pinilian or binacol, the design elements, and how these are crafted together by the weaver. The artwork in the textile reflects not just the expertise, but the rich mathematical instincts of the Philippine weaver. Indeed, the Philippine weaver's intrinsic mathematical talent is one which we can be truly proud of. For this research, I would like to thank my research collaborators. They are present here today, Dr. Agnes Garciano and Dr. Debbie Marie Versosa who are assistant professors from the Department of Mathematics of the Ateneo de Manila University. I would also like to acknowledge on behalf of Agnes and Derby, Floyd Quintos, Emma Abrina of the Yuchenko Museum, Dr. Norma Respicio, and Dr. Annalyn Salvador Amores, Bernadette David, the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, and the Loyola Schools of the Ateneo de Manila University. Without their help and support, this presentation would not be possible. Thank you very much for your attention. <music>